Okay, today I would like to talk about this paper, which is the Universal and Reusable Virus Deactivation System for Respiratory Protection. This paper was published, I believe, in 2017 uh, by Professor, uh, the main professor was Ho Yik Choi and uh, his team. And this paper reports that you can add something very simple, household item, to the facial masks that are in such short supply right now, these surgical masks that everyone's sort of looking for, and make them, as proposed by this paper, much safer, much more resistant to viral penetration. So I'm just going to review what this paper says and then quickly show you how to do it. So there'll be a link to this paper underneath this video. Um, and you'll see the authors. It was published in Nature, which is quite a reputable scientific journal. The main idea is that if you have a high concentration of salt on these masks, which uh, have variably reported resistance to viral penetration, that you can increase its efficiency in killing viruses. Right? These masks are not really made specifically for viruses. They're made to block the penetration of fluids and bacteria and um, other aerosolized particles that a, a medical person uh, might find in their environment. And this is not specifically optimized for viruses. So naturally, there's a certain amount of viral particles that will get through. Uh, if you want to reduce that, especially with this, this health concern with the, um, the COVID-19, uh, you might want to look at this paper. I'm not making any specific claims about this. I'm just repeating what's in this paper and sharing it because it's so simple and so useful that I think people will be able to benefit from that. So this is a pretty brief paper and you'll see in the link, you could even open it up while you're listening to this video. Um, and you will see that they're saying that this is universal, that it's broad spectrum, it affects all kinds of viruses. And when you dig into the paper a little bit, it turns out to be incredibly effective. Um, so maybe now that it's, it's, uh, there's a need for it, this paper will have more circulation because I haven't heard a lot of people talk about it, but it's super, super interesting. Oh, before I continue, there are other videos saying how to make these salt, um, salt uh, coated masks that I found on YouTube. None of them have the surfactant on them, which I'll mention in a minute. So they may work and they may get salt onto the mask. This paper, however, the one that was tested with all the tests that you'll see in here, he used something called a surfactant, which helps the salt stick to the specific fibers. These are polypropylene fibers inside of here and they resist water. So you're gonna want the surfactant added um, in order to, to overcome the resistance of the water. So, okay, if you open up your pamphlet to page two, uh, you'll see that one of the first things that he says in this paper, and I'm going to read it, is that how does this work, right? Why does this work? Salt, who cares about salt? Salt is locally dissolved after you've treated the mask and there's salt on it. There'll be sort of a salt layer, right? You won't be able to see it or maybe you will, very small crystals, um, and you'll be able to taste it if it's, if it's the, uh, you will put it on the side that's next to your face. So you'll taste a little salt. Um, what, what's going on? So the virus gets through the, the mask, which is, you know, some of it will be caught on the outside, but it's meant to be caught on the filter. So the virus will get caught on the filter, which is the middle layer, which I'll discuss more in a second. And the salt is locally dissolved by the, the moisture that comes along with the virus. All living things have a certain amount of water on them. That moisture that's on, that's on the virus will locally dissolve the salt, but then it will be such a high concentration of salt that it will deform and kill the virus in a very simple way. So I think this is a beautiful thesis and they went on to prove it at great length. This is a really well done paper. So the first thing that the results say um, is that the, the coating of the salt uh, it changes the surface properties of the, um, the hydrophobic, which is what I mean by water doesn't really penetrate these fibers, the hydrophobic filter inside to completely hydrophilic. And it also has a charge on it. It goes from neutral to charged, which may mean something to some of you. It doesn't really matter. What it means is that the virus now has more of an affinity for the material in here. So instead of flying through the air, and if it gets through, this filter is, is pretty good. It filters, uh, according to the box, up to 98% of particles. 
2%. You don't want 2%. So it will catch a, a large number, unknown, not measured, but a large number of those particles will now have an attractive force grabbing it and, and pulling it to the to the, um, the inner layer. So that's totally good. That's what you want. And that's when you're looking at the, the paper, this is gonna be right on the second page in the second paragraph under results. So, and they proved the hydrophilic nature of salt coating can greatly improve adhesion of the viral aerosols to the polypropylene fibers compared to the bare filter. And it's seen in figure 1D. So they're not just hypothesizing it or saying it like, oh, maybe this happens. They're going to show it to you. That's what's beautiful about scientific papers. There's a whole bunch of claims on the second page, which I've marked um, so that I would remember to tell them to you. But basically, the filtration efficiency and the protection increases uh, the ability of the filter to take out small particles. So the size of this virus is 0.3 microns, right in the range of what it can be filtered by the salt aerosolized um, filter in the middle. Um, so the bare filter, the bare filter, this is beautiful, did not exhibit any significant level of resistance against penetration of virus. So if a virus is on the right path and it hits that filter, it's not going to be really resisted by the inner layer, which is why a lot of people are saying, well, these are variably effective and the best thing they do is stop you from touching your face. So I'm not saying it's true or false. It is true that it stops you from touching your face. I think it also grabs a, a fair number of particles, but I don't know. This is not something I've studied directly. Um, but these people are saying, actually, it doesn't grab that many of them. But once you coat it with the salt, it grabs many more. And again, they show it in this paper. Um, salt coated filters show substantially increasing filtration efficiency. Uh, so that's great. Deactivation. So first it's grabbing the virus, right? The virus is not getting through to you. The second thing, look at this, the, vi the virus is then deactivated. The salt, as we said on the first page, but now they're proving it. So the salt actually deforms the shape. It, it actually pulls water molecules out, mechanically deforms the shape of the virus and, and makes it ineffective. It can't, it can't work anymore. Biologically, it's been kind of crushed. Um, What's the time scale that this happens on? I hear you ask. It happens for, for influenza viruses. Clearly no one has had the time to study this for the, the corona, this particular COVID-19 coronavirus. But for influenza viruses, it's five minutes. So maybe the COVID virus is more hardy, maybe it's less hardy, you know, but if we're talking less than, I don't know, nine days, five minutes is pretty good um, range. So five minutes for the influenza virus, uh, infer what you will from that, but I think that that's awesome. Um, the next thing that we have is a strain nonspecific viral deactivation. Uh, so that means regardless of what the strain is, the virus is gonna be deactivated. This is all um, very good reporting. Here's the tests that they did. Again, look at the paper for yourself. You can interpret these graphs uh, and see that they not only make claims, but they prove them. And the conclusion uh, is that this is a valuable and inexpensive thing to do, and then they go over the method. So now that I've established this, I'm going to show you uh, how to do this. So the first thing that they say is you want to use the middle layer of these, of these masks. Now these masks are in short supply, so I'm going to tell you that I practice this uh, on paper towels. Do not ever use a paper towel like as an adjunct to these things if you think you're going to add something to it. Paper towels are super porous. However, you can use tissues. Tissues are actually um, reasonable, right? You don't want to use a tissue by itself, but they have a better, better filtration. You know, obviously we're not comparing to this, but way better than the, uh, the porosity of a paper towel. So, uh, however, I experimented on little bits of paper towel because I didn't want to destroy a valuable mask. They're in short supply. I don't have a lot of them. Uh, and I also practiced on a tissue. So this sad, wrinkly looking thing is a tissue that I did spray with the solution that I made. So how do you make the solution? So I'll show you real quickly. I measured, I have a, I have a scale, right? And if you don't have a scale, you can, you can certainly buy a scale. And I measured third, I'm sorry, it's the, let me start with the recipe <laughs> and I'll write it down below. 
it's for 100 um, mils of water, which is about this much, not very much, they're putting 29 grams of salt and one uh, quarter of a teaspoon of something called polysorbate 20. This was six bucks on Amazon, widely available. Uh, it's called a surfactant or an emulsifier. It helps things dissolve. In this case, it's what I mentioned much earlier. It's helping this solution uh, stick to the hydrophobic fibers of the, of the polypropylene filter. So a lot of people are not putting this in. You definitely want to put this in. So put your order into Amazon. You'll get it in a couple of days. I shouldn't make a pitch for Amazon. Put your order in. I'm so sorry. Put your order in for wherever you find polysorbate 20, also known as tween or tween 20. Uh, and uh, you want to put that in. So it's just a little liquid. It goes right in. So this is what, this is what um, 100 mils of water looks like. This is what, if you can see it without me pouring it out, this is what 30 grams of salt looks like. It's actually a substantial amount. So what you're going to want to do, this should be deionized water. You can get that in the supermarket. Um, there's also ways to make it yourself. If there's enough questions to me in the comments, I'll, I'll post how to make this. You can make it at home by boiling water in a pot, putting a bowl in the pot, um, inverting the cover of the pot, putting ice in it. So the steam will hit the cover, be cooled off and drip into the bowl. It's very simple. You can make it at home. You can also buy it for like a dollar at the store. So you get some deionized water. Oh, and if all else fails and you're in a rush and you're like, I don't care, you could probably use water. I mean, we're not um, replicating the paper uh, to prove it to anyone. We're doing something that we want to do. Uh, some of you might be in more of a hurry than others. So I would have no qualms if I had to do it with regular water. But in any case, this is deionized water. This is what 29 grams of salt looks like. So you're going to want to, this is going to be hard to dissolve. You're going to want to boil, uh, I would say a little less, like 90 mils of water which by the way, I measured in this measuring cup that's so old. I don't even know if you can see it. I had to uh, copy the numbers in, in, put a Sharpie to see the numbers more clearly. But see, this is a regular measuring cup and it has the metric on it. So take this, put it in a microwave or a pot or whatever you want, uh, boil it. Then you put the salt in. The reason I have it in this jar is because once I put the salt in, it's surprising that it doesn't dissolve right away. If I shook it up, I let it sit for a while. When it clarifies, what's clear again, maybe a tiny bit cloudy, but nothing should settle out. So shake it and let it dissolve, let it be hot. Uh, when it cools down and it's clear, which it really should be, uh, then you add a quarter of a teaspoon of the polysorbate, you stir it up and you've got your solution. So what I did, you can now do two things. You can, to test it or to put it on your masks, you can put it in a spray bottle, which is how I made these things. You'll know that you've done it right because after you spray that solution onto um, your test material, tissue, well, I started with paper towels and then tissues. Um, when it dries, you can't see it on the film, but you, you can look at it under a bright light and you'll see tiny little sparkles like a coating of snow. Uh, they're not, it doesn't look like snow, but you'll see that it catches the light. That's the salt crystals. That's why you're using such a high concentration of salt in this water, because you're going to want to see that crystallization on this, on this material. So the next thing you want to do is you take this mask and I actually started a little cut on this. So let me give you a two second tutorial on the mask. The colored side goes out. It's plastic, it's meant as a liquid barrier, uh, not really a filter. There's a nose wire in here, so you, you mold it to your nose. And the inside, this paper is a sort of um, just a, a holder. So they're three ply and in the middle, that's the filter that you wanna, that we're gonna wanna pull out and, uh, and soak in or spray with this salt solution. Um, some people are getting the filter out by cutting the bottom off. I find when I did that, I cut the earlobes off, the ear loops, and I didn't want to do that. So I used the tip of a scissors and I made a small hole, and then I was going to cut the bottom whoops, off for you. So let's see if I can, I can't even see the hole, so I, I found it. So here now I'm cutting this inner plastic liner. You need sharp scissors. 
and you really want to stay I just went way high you want to stay as close to the bottom seam as possible you're gonna to want to use better scissors than this Okay, now the reason you want to be as low on the seam as possible is because when we're done and we soak this filter or spray it and reinsert it, we're going to put a little piece of medical tape uh, to seal this back up so that you can wear it. So this scissors is not good, guys. <laughs> this is fun. So let's see what we got here. Okay, hello scissors. You know what your job is? It's to cut and you are not doing your job. Okay. So I should probably know some jokes to tell when there's delays like this in videos. Um, so I definitely don't want to waste this. Uh, like many people, I don't have a lot of these either. So I'm gently, gently widening the opening here. Now I can get to this middle layer. Okay. We're going to do, oh, you know, this is interesting. So some masks are two-ply. The ones I experimented on, which look like this. These are three-ply. I'm beginning to think this one is two-ply because there's nothing to pull out. So that's okay. So what that means is fine. It's just uh, it's interesting to be aware of the differences in these, diff in these different kinds of masks. These masks come in three grades, actually, just so you know, there's a uh, grade one, two, and three and grade one and two you don't want. But if you have it, and I have a feeling this might be grade two, the ones with three ply are grade three. Um, this is what you'll have to do. So learning live. So what I would do is I would cut this. We're going to spray the inside of this mask with the salt and we're not going to use the scissors. <laughs> I'm going to try these bad boys and see what happens. This is, you know, they used to say live TV was really cool to watch because you didn't know what was gonna happen. They didn't say what it was like to be the person on the live TV, not knowing what's gonna happen. Okay, these scissors are better. Oh man, I really don't wanna sacrifice this beautiful mask, this hard won mask, courtesy of my favorite dentist in the area. Okay, so I pulled this up now like a little window. You're gonna to wanna to do it a little, a little nicer than this, but this exposes the inner, the inner side of this mask. So this outside is uh, probably has the, um, the liquid barrier on it, the pink coating, and the inside is gonna be the filter. And I guess what happened when they manufactured it, actually I can see it now, is the filter was sort of thermoplasticized and this is one layer and then this is just the layer that goes against your skin. Um, okay, so since I have already done the spraying on this and I, I know how it works and I know how much to do it, now I would take, this was a clean brand new spray bottle. It's got the solution that I made. It's got the 100 mils of water, distilled water, boiled, dissolved 29 grams of salt, uh, in hot water, waited for it to cool and clarify, made sure it was completely dissolved. In fact, I had to heat it twice. So if you find that it's you have incomplete dissolution, just heat it again, make sure it doesn't boil away, put a little cover on it. I did it in the microwave. Uh, you do it however you like, um, but do make, it's a small amount to so make sure it doesn't boil away while you're reheating it or even heating it the first time. You wanna keep the volume at hundred grams or the salt will never dissolve. Anyway, and then when it was dissolved, I put in a quarter of a teaspoon of our polysorbate 20, mixed it up. That's what's in here. So now I'm just simply going to spray and wet this. I want to make sure there's nothing behind it. And you can see it's super wet. Okay, and even dripping onto the floor. That would be nice. So in the paper, they dried it at 37 degrees, which is a very, there's lab ovens that can actually be, that's just about body temperature. That can be very low. Uh, my kitchen is, you know, not at all 37 degrees, but it's, it's a kitchen and I'm gonna let this dry overnight. And then when this is dry, I'm gonna put that flat back and seal it with, this is just medical tape that you can get at the drugstore. So you just seal the three corners that I cut to get to the inside. 
and use the mask as normal. The masks are still only good for one use. And the idea here, as, as, uh, as clearly described in this paper, is to make them far more efficient in both catching and killing the viruses. So I hope that I've done two things. I hope that I've made um, uh, gained some interest in this paper, which I think is a really inexpensive way to boost the safety of these medical masks in general, right? It doesn't have to just be for COVID-19. This is for any anything that you want to avoid, even bacteria, but of course also any virus. So I hope I've increased that. I hope I've shown you, uh, given you a little insight into how to do it. And I'm available if there's any questions and put them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. And hope this was helpful to uh, the viewers. Thank you very much.